Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it is officially 2019 now and I hope everyone's having an amazing start to their brand new year. I can already tell this one's going to be very, very good and also simultaneously fresh. I feel like right now everyone's getting super motivated and posting their goals and resolutions all over social media with the hashtag new year, new me. And for today's video, that is exactly what I am doing too. Obviously you guys know as a social media influencer and a superstar, my job is to be in the public eye all the time. I'm constantly filming YouTube videos, doing red carpet, appearances, doing meet and greets, and of course, taking Instagram pictures. Now, 2018 was filled with some pretty iconic different Instagram pictures and looks that I am so proud of. And looking back, most of the comments are always so incredibly positive, but the one comment that I get all the time about my makeup is that my foundation does not match. Now, I wanna quickly talk about foundation matching because it is clearly quite the controversial topic in both the makeup community and in the comment section here on my YouTube videos because um, every single video at this point that I post, I always get hundreds and thousands of comments of people saying that my foundation color does not match. And if you'll have noticed, um, it continues to not match in every single video. And that is because uh, I don't care. And I have two eyes that can also see that the color does not match me. I will never really understand why some people take foundation matching so incredibly seriously to the point of leaving hate comments about it. Over the last three years of being a beauty guru, I've tested out a ton of different foundations, but you guys know I always go back to my holy grails. And that is because when I am wearing makeup, I'm usually wearing it for very, very long periods of time from super early in the morning, going through lots of meetings or meet and greets and not taking it off until literally I'm about to pass out in bed later that night. So for me, I definitely like a foundation that is long wearing, that makes my skin look really, really beautiful, that keeps the oil through and photographs really, really well. So wearability, I would say is my number one priority. Whereas I usually wear hoodies, turtlenecks, big coats, or long sleeve t-shirts where you can't really see the rest of my body that often. So color isn't really as big of a deal for me. I can also admit that foundation matching isn't really a skill that I've ever tried to master during my time of being a beauty guru simply because I feel like everybody has a different rule as to where you're supposed to actually match the color. Some artists say that you're supposed to match it to your face. Some say that you're supposed to match it to your neck. Some claim that it's your chest. Some say that it's your arms. Or some say that it's literally your entire body. And for me, all of those parts are completely different shades. Look at the color difference between my leg and my face. This is why nothing ever matches. Finding my perfect foundation match was a challenge that I gave up on a very, very long time ago because for me, wearability is my number one priority and I would always know that I could face in a photo or just simply switch to lighting around a little bit and a color would usually be pretty close and I would look pretty regardless of the color. But I know a lot of you guys take foundation matching very, very seriously and I'm not even gonna lie. Some of the screenshots that you guys have gotten from my photos or collabs or photos that have been taken of me on the red carpet at this point are really starting to get embarrassing. The hate comments and people questioning my makeup abilities never used to bother me, but it is 2019, new year, new me, and you guys know I never back down from a challenge. And even though I do makeup every single day, of course I can always learn and always get better. And I feel like my job as a makeup artist and beauty guru is to pass on that knowledge to all of you guys. So for today's brand new video, I thought it would be so much fun to take on the challenge to try to find my perfect foundation match. Without further ado, let's head over to the mall and go sister shopping. All right, you guys, so me and Katie Drew are currently in the car on the way over to the mall to go pick up a few more foundations for today's video. We're just going to run in and I'm gonna go to basically every single foundation that they have in the store and buy like one, two, three shades that I think are gonna match me. And we're gonna try to film as much as we possibly can. And we're gonna check out, hopefully in peace, and then head back home to do all the testing. So we will see you inside the mall. All right, so I first wanna grab something from Fenty. Okay, now we have neutral, warm, cool. Cool. I feel like this is the region that I need to be in for sure. Neutral. Mm, that's, that's definitely too, too warm. I know that. Well, okay, let's try 170. Okay, let's do that. 170, 180, and then let's do 192. So we're doing neutral, cool, and warm from Fenty. In my original review, I really did not like the Fenty foundation and I got dragged to hell and back for it. It was just not my type of formula, but we're gonna try it again for today's video and see, who knows, maybe it'll come around, maybe I'll like it a lot better this time. So people really, really love the Dior foundation. I have personally never tried them, but I do really wanna try out the Dior Skin Forever foundation because this is like a holy grail ride or die for a lot of different people. And I know Jacqueline loves this, so I'm gonna try this out today. Just looking at this already, the shade range is very, very embarrassing, but I'm gonna try maybe like 20. 
Oh, that actually looks like it could be a really good match for me. Let's look at tender beige. That looks good too. Yeah. Linen. Two yellow. So maybe let's do 15 and 20. <gasps> that looks like it could be such a good match for me. It really does. Oh my god. Okay, let's grab that too. That like matches my hand perfectly. Oh, that's too cool toned, I think. Everyone is convinced that my skin tone is like not warm. Maybe we should get that one too. I think that's good for Dior. Okay, so I really want to try the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. This one is like a holy grail. I know Tana swears by this, which probably means it's going to be horrible, but... Okay, that is literally yellow. Maybe ivory medium. Oh, ew. That's still very yellow. Ivory light. Sister, shake up for a real one. Okay, so number 14 is ivory medium, which is this, which is way too dark and yellow. And ivory light is like literally way too light. And ivory um is broken so i guess we're gonna buy this one and it'll be kind of a fun and fresh mystery to see what comes inside okay Which one are we at? too dark cool almond maybe warm almond nope that's yellow i love three flavors of almond me too that one's decent i feel like it's not gonna be like, it's it too, looks a little too dark yeah maybe Probably cool ivory. ivory yeah that's a good one yeah stem cover drops because they are like literally just pigment in a bottle and this could be either really good or really bad. Oh. Do you have to mix that with anything? You're supposed to mix it with a foundation, but a lot of people use this as an actual foundation. That's kind of a decent color, to be honest. Yeah. Well, that's P20. That looks like a good color for me. Oh my God, that actually looks really good. P30. So let's grab one of those. And they don't have a P30. I see a P40 and a P20 let's and a P50. What's N25? That, that one looks good, good too. too. N25, let's grab this. We have found Miss Huda Beauty, which I am so excited because I've never tried this foundation. I don't really support Huda because um, homophobia isn't cute, but I do want to try this foundation because I do know that this is a holy grail, so I'm going to put my personal bias aside for the sake of this video, and I want to test out a few of these different formulas, so I'm going to look at vanilla first. Oh, wait, is that the right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay, that is light. Ashu? Mm, that's too yellow. That could be good. 210. Oh, and of course, it's the only one they're out of. Are you literally kidding me? Well, we can look for it. Okay. We've been scamming Custard. the whole time. Maybe we should grab that, 220. None of these are even a close color match. So I'm gonna pick up number 220, which is a little bit dark for me. And I'm gonna ask if they have 210 in the back and see what we can make work. Okay, so once again, very easy to find a shade if you are light skinned. Um, not so easy if you are literally anything darker than that. There should literally be like eight shades in between this, but of course there's one and it's sold out. Are we surprised? No. This, ew. Oh, that's kind of good. But a little bit dark still. Why are there so many bisques? These are all bisques. Oh, that's a good one. 330 bisque nude. Let's grab that. 32320 bisque. Cool. Oh, that looks good. Okay, so last we are at Too Faced Born This Way, which you guys know is my all time favorite foundation. This has been my ride or die for over a year now. The formula is just truly unmatched, in my opinion. It works really well for my skin tone. But that being said, even though I love it, I still do have issues finding my perfect shade, not even gonna lie. So I wanna pick up pretty much all of them in my area and see like what works okay so i always use natural beige in my videos mostly because i ran out of all my other colors um and this is the one that i always get comments about saying it doesn't match which i know but also at the same time it's kind of like still a neutral tone so it doesn't really change the color of my skin it just makes it a little bit more tan so like this is my kind of ride or die so i'm gonna get another one of those just for funsies but i also think i should probably pick up maybe probably like that one. light beige well light beige is still neutral light beige warm nude oh that was a lot nude nude is one i used to use all the time and i know this one's a pretty decent match hello i'm gonna get another nude for sure maybe like a vanilla too yellow pearl this is getting too light not That's even a good one. should i get pearl too literally on the way out i just found the dior show foundation which i've been dying to try so i'm gonna mm, way too light mm, too yellow one neutral that's a little bit too dark already are you kidding maybe one cool rosy Mm, that looks good. All right, sisters, so we are back home from the mall. The trip went very, very smoothly. Thank God we were in and out with all of our foundations. And we are now back home. I just unboxed all 34 foundations that we picked up today. On all of these foundations, we spent $1,204.60. If one of these colors does not match me, I'm literally going to quit my job. Swatching all of these shades is going to be a very, very long process and I'm gonna to have to remember all of them in my head. So I just wanna go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and take my shirt off. This video's taking a little bit of a turn. Ooh, yeah. 
I do want to swatch a few of these colors on my chest because when it comes to picking a foundation for me, I usually pick something that's close to my body color, which is a lot more yellow toned and make it a little bit more tan. But my chest is very, very pale and almost pinky toned and having the color difference between like here and here is always what gets me really, really bad and leads to a lot of negative comments. So let's see what's gonna happen. To start off these swatches, just to get it over with and out of the way, I wanna first grab my Holy Grail foundation, the Too Faced of Born This Way. You guys know this is my all-time favorite. I use this in almost every single video, and that's because it lasts me all day long, but this is also the foundation that has gotten me in trouble a lot of times for never being the same color. So let's go ahead and see if I'm just using the wrong shade or if it really just doesn't match. Okay, the first color that I picked up was Seashell, and then we have Natural Beige, which is a color that I usually use all the time, definitely much more golden tan. And then finally we have Nude. Those are all three color options that I got up Born This Way. Seashell is actually looking like it might be the closest match. Let's put that on my face. So we have Seashell, Nude, and Natural Beige. And we have Seashell and Nude and Natural Beige. All three of those look way too dark. <sighs> Uh-oh. I'm gonna let all these foundations sit on my skin for a little bit too to see if any of them oxidize or change colors as they kind of set down and move on and then we'll kind of evaluate them in a little bit. So that is actually the Born This Way collection all complete. Since we did my all-time favorite foundation now, first I want to do a little bit of a throwback and do the foundation that got me started and that is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick. And I picked up three shades in it today. This foundation looked amazing on me when I was living in New York, which has pretty humid weather. But as soon as I moved to LA, the formulation just didn't exactly work because it's much more dry here. Regardless, it's still a really amazing formula. We first have Y225 and then Y325. Oh, that looks like it's really close to my arm color. And then Y365. That one looks kind of similar too. 225, 325, 365. Oh my God, you guys. Literally Y225 is still too dark for my chest when it literally looks white on my face. This is why I gave up on foundation color matching. Oh, absolutely not. Okay, oh, that's a scandal. I think out of all these Y325, which is the middle one on my hand, the one that I said almost blends in, and the middle one on my face, which I think would look really, really beautiful all blended down, is going to be the best option. Um, at this point, anything on the chest is not looking too promising. So next, I wanna go ahead and swatch a ColourPop foundation. Now, this foundation was very, very popular in 2018 in the makeup community. A lot of people really, really liked this, and if you guys remember, I actually did a makeup where I headed over to the ColourPop factory and customized my entire beauty routine, including my foundation color. So this one is actually not for sale. This was custom made to match me and I got a lot of comments on that video saying that it was my best foundation match ever. So I figured it'd be only right to put it in this video and let's test it out and see what it really looks like. On my hand it does look a little bit more yellow toned but I feel like if I put it on my face, let's put ColourPop right here. Oh that's very yellow. And on my chest too. I feel like that's very yellow, which I feel like is what you guys comment about negatively a lot. So maybe that ain't it, sis. Chief. So next I want to swatch a foundation that I have a love-hate relationship with, and that is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. A lot of people, especially celebrity makeup artists, stand by this foundation, and I will say I've had it on a few times and I've had some of my favorite makeup days of all time, but I've also put this on and hated how I looked. I really don't know why, but regardless, I have a few different shades in my collection, so I thought I would swatch. This is number 3.5, and I also have number 4, which suspiciously is lighter than 3.5. I will never understand how how their shade system works. Don't really care, it's not that serious. Let's do 3.5 on my chest and also on my face. And then let's also try number four as well. That is way too light. Why did I even buy that color, are you kidding? Oh, that almost matches my chest. You are, you've got to be kidding me. It still doesn't even match though. My chest, you need like white. Are you kidding? Another foundation that absolutely shook the beauty industry in 2018 was the Jouer Essential High Coverage Foundation. Now, I have tried this before. I will say I'm not personally a fan of this one. I love Jouer, but I definitely prefer a more medium coverage foundation that you can build up. This for me was way too much. I thought that I had a lot more of these in my collection, but turns out that they are all gone. I think a lot of my makeup artist friends always take these when they are over for their kits. Totally fine, they're obviously getting a much better use out of them, but I wish that I would have gotten more at the store today. Regardless, I'm gonna test out the shade Nutmeg and see if this is a match. Wow. 
we're just gonna move on from that. This year, one of my favorite artists and really good friends in the makeup community, Alyssa Ashley, collaborated with NYX Cosmetics on their Can't Stop, Won't Stop foundation line. So I picked up three different shades that I did test out on my face. We have Soft Beige, Medium Olive, and Natural Buff. Oh, that actually looks like it could be good. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Okay, I guess we don't have medium olive. Well, that's definitely not it. We have a soft beige. Oh, that could be good, actually. And natural buff. Absolutely not. Mm -mm. That That is not it. Next, we have another cult favorite. This is the NARS Natural Radiant Foundation, and I am in the shade, maybe, Santa Fe. Oh, that actually could be good. T. Let's put this next to this one. Okay. Oh. She could be a final contender. Next, we have probably the most beloved drugstore foundation in the entire world. This is the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Foundation. And I grabbed two different shades, 120 Classic Ivory and 128 Warm Nude. We have Classic Ivory and Warm Nude. Classic Ivory, Warm Nude. Classic Ivory and Warm Nude. I feel like Classic Ivory actually looks like it could be pretty decent. That NARS one still looks like it actually might be good. From drugstore, let's jump a little bit and move on to a more bougie foundation. I picked up two of the Lancome Tint Idole. These are loved by a lot of people. I've actually never tried this one before, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing how it looks on the skin today. And I picked up the shades. 310 Bisque Cool and 330 Bisque Neutral. What I've definitely noticed from testing out a lot of these foundations is that I have a lot of cool tone, a lot of neutral, and a lot of different warm tone foundations. Not only do a lot of brands do it differently, but apparently, um, I just choose to be different undertones on certain different days. It's just an issue. <laughs> 310, 330, 310, 330. I feel like I could put most of these on and make them work, except for literally this one. <laughs> So next after Lancome, we have Dior. And I actually have five different foundations from Dior today. And three of them are different types. We have the Dior Air Class, which a lot of people love. Dior Backstage, which is a newer foundation to the line. And also the Dior Skin Forever, literally none of which I've actually tried, but a lot of people do love. First, we have the Dior Skin Forever in the shade number 15. Now I actually was looking for shade 20 in the store and they were sold out of it, but this looks like it actually could be a really good color for me. 15, put that over here. Then we have Dior Air Flash in 104. How does this even work? Do you just, oh my God, my swatches aren't even gonna look pretty anymore. Well, let's do it on my hand first. Oh, it's so cold, are you? Ah! Oh, that's kind of fun. I feel like I should put this like up here. What the heck? Squirted and splotched for a real one. Oh my God, that looks so gross. Let's try shade number 200. This one was definitely a little bit more pinky toned. Oh, <gasps> that blends in so well with my chest. You can literally barely even see that color. Let's put that one over here. That could work. Miss Air Flash in number 200. We're gonna keep her in mind. And finally we have the Dior Backstage, which is the new addition to the collection. So first we have one CR, and I've seen a lot of different Instagram baddies doing this on their little clickbait videos. Can we please leave those stupid clickbait Instagram videos in 2018? I am so sick of seeing thumbnails of people lighting things on fire, cutting up their makeup. We're all sick of it. Let your talent speak for yourself. This has been a PSA. Next I wanna try the YSL All Hours Foundation, and this is in the shade one. Warm Almond. Okay. Oops. It looks like it's one swatch. It's not one. That's two different colors. I feel like that one is definitely too warm for my skin tone. Do I literally not have warm undertones? Like, have I been lying to myself this entire time? What is going on? Next, we have Marc Jacobs Remarkable. I already know that I hate this foundation, but we're gonna try it anyway. This is in the shade 12 Ivory. This applicator is so unsanitary. It's not even funny. That, no, that is, that ain't it, sis. This is too hard. Next we have Huda Beauty, and this one is in the shade 220. Now, I was not even looking forward to buying this one, but apparently um, a lot of you guys were because almost every single color was sold out at the store, which made finding a shade even harder than it already was. This is really, really thick. Wow, definitely not. In her defense though, I did want to pick up number 10 and that was a shade that was sold out. So I picked up this one instead. It's still not good though. Another drugstore one, I grabbed the Alpha Foundation in the shade Alabaster. This one's only $6, so it is super, super affordable. Wow, this is really thick too. Okay, it looks a little bit light. That looks like a good match to my chest, kind of. This literally is like thick paint. Kind of live. 
Okay, e.l.f. coming through with a $6 full coverage foundation. Are you kidding? Next, I grabbed the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid Foundation, and this one is in the shade Ivory. My assistant actually swears by this foundation. He wears this almost every single day. Oh, kind of a good color. It's from eight. Where are we going to swatch now? Let's put this like over here. Mm, too light. Really good match for my neck though. Oh, wow. <sighs> this game is so hard. Now the next foundation I picked up three different shades in and that is in the Fenty Pro Filter Foundation. Now, if you've been subscribed for a while, you would know that I did upload a review on the entire Fenty collection back when it first launched and um, it did not go over well. In fact, it is literally the most disliked video on my entire YouTube channel because the Rihanna stands could not stand the fact that I did not like a lot of these products. They said that I was bitter about not being invited to the launch party. Sorry, the foundation just really, really sucked for me the first time. But that being said, I'm all about giving second chances and regardless of how I felt originally, there is absolutely no denying that this foundation was truly a game changer in the industry, not only for its formula, but it became the standard for formulating shade ranges, which I think is so incredible. Fenty literally has every single skin tone you could possibly imagine. So hopefully I'll be able to find mine in here. I picked up shade 170, 180. Oh, that might be good actually. And 190. Okay, 170, 180 and 190. Wow, 180 could be a really good match for me. Oh my gosh. 170, 180, and 190. <laughs> Beautiful. Correction, before I accidentally drag Fenty again, I actually had my bottles in the wrong order. This one, the one that I liked is 170, and the more yellow one is 180, so 170 is actually the good match for me. One of the more different launches we saw in the foundation category this year were the Cover FX Custom Color Drops. Now, a lot of people really, really like these, and I see a lot of makeup artists having these in their kits. We have N20. Uh-oh. Oh my god, that needs to stop dripping immediately. And N25. Oh my god, I can feel it dripping onto my eyeball. Absolutely not. Nope. It would not be a proper foundation video if we skipped out on the foundation that literally changed the game for so many artists years ago, and that is the MAC Pro Longwear Foundation. I feel like literally everybody has had this in their kit at some point, whether you're just starting out or a celebrity makeup artist that has been working for decades. People love this one, and I've actually never tried it out. I am really looking forward to it today. I have NW20 and N18. Here's NW20. Oh, that might be good, actually. And N18. NW20. N18. NW20. N18. Oh my god, NW20 looks like it could be a really good match for me, actually. Last but finally not least, I thought we should do the foundation that literally the entire beauty community is talking about right now, which I am so excited for, and that is the Morphe... Oh my god, this box is too heavy. Ah! And that is the Morphe... Oh my god! Fluidity Collection! This is too heavy, I can't even open this on camera. So Morphe just announced the release of their Fluidity Collection, which I am so beyond excited for. It includes 60 different foundations and a concealer collection as well. The foundations are gonna be retailing for only $14, and the concealer is gonna be retailing for only $9. And of course, you guys can use code James for 10% off your purchase. It is a 60 color shade range, which I think is so incredible. There is no denying that there is a new standard for inclusivity, which I think is literally the best thing to ever happen to the beauty community. That being said, all those 60 shades is a great thing. It's not so great for someone like me who has a lot of problems picking their colors. So I'm going to set this down now because it literally weighs 100 pounds and I'm going to pick out a few shades that work for me. What I think is actually so dope though is that Morphe actually included a prepaid return shipping label in this PR box so us influencers get to pick out the shades that work for us and send the rest back and they get donated to women's shelters all around LA which I think is literally so cool in such a good way to make sure that none of the products go to waste. So without further ado, let me pick out a few shades and I'll be right back. So I just went through and I swatched 15 of the light shades on the back of my hands and I will say even from looking at them, although they are all in the light region, all the undertones and all these colors are so different, which I think is gonna be so amazing for people like me who actually struggle finding a really good foundation color. That being said, it makes it very challenging to find the perfect one. So from those 15, I did find four that I really liked, starting off with 1.120, 1.5, 2.0, 1.1 and 2.2. We have 1.120, 1.50, 2.10. Oh, that one might actually be really good and fresh. And 2.2. 1.120. I'm running out of room. Wait a second, whatever foundation that was like blended into my face. Does anybody remember what that one was? Dior Air Flash. No, these two. Yes. Oh, you're right. 1.120, 1.50. A little bit too light and yellow, I think. 2.1. 2.1, oh. And last, but finally, not least, 
Oh, do we literally just save the best for last? Oh, I don't have room anymore. We're just gonna put this one over here. 2.2. All right, sisters, so that is officially every single foundation that I now own swatched on both my face and my neck and chest. Looking in the mirror, I look literally crazy, but there are some colors in here that look like they could be a really, really good match. So what I think I wanna do is clean myself up, wipe everything off, and go back through the footage and pick out the shades that look the absolute best based on the swatches and apply them all over and let you guys vote in the end to see which color matches the best on me. All right, you guys, I am back. I just cleaned up after doing my sister swatches and apparently trying on every single foundation in a makeup store is the best way to find your perfect shade because I just looked back at the footage and I found six colors that I think actually look really, really bomb and close to my skin tone. But of course, those are only swatches. So I picked out all six different foundations and I'm gonna apply them to my entire face and neck and a little bit of my chest as well. And we're gonna see how they actually compare. And at the end, you guys are gonna pick which one you think works the best. So without further ado, Let's get into more foundation. Starting off in the same order as the video, we first have our Too Faced Born This Way, except this one is in the shade Nude. I used to use the shade Natural Beige, which is a little bit darker, but this one actually looked really, really beautiful on my skin tone, and I'm gonna be really, really annoyed if I've been dealing with hate comments and scandals when it comes to picking the right foundation shade, when my favorite foundation literally had the perfect shade for me all along. Oh my God, that literally matches like perfectly. This is a little bit embarrassing. By the way, I'm gonna apply all of my foundations using the Morphe Contour and Blending Sponge. This is my all-time favorite. It comes in my brush set, or you can get it separately for $7, or even cheaper if you use Code James for 10% off. The one thing that I don't really love when it comes to pouring this way is that a little doesn't really go a long way. I always need like four or five squirts to cover my entire face and neck. Then again, this is definitely a more lighter coverage foundation, and I like to build up to be more kind of medium to full coverage, so that's probably why, but regardless, I'm just blending this all over. Of course, we're gonna blend it down the neck as well, and I'm using my Morphe M439 brush. This is my favorite big buffing foundation brush. Blending it all the way down my neck and underneath my ears and behind them and the back of my neck as well because it's really, really embarrassing when a color doesn't go all the way around. <laughs> Take it from me. And all the way onto my collarbones as well. I literally thought the shade was pale until once again, blending it all the way down my neck. It still looks too dark in comparison to my chest, but next to my arm, I hate this. This is a full application of the Too Faced Born This Way foundation in the color Nude. Next, we have the Makeup Forever Y325. Now, when I actually looked back at the footage and at the swatches, this one, in my opinion at least, was the closest match to my face tone, and this was actually the first foundation I ever used, so literally, I may have known how to match my foundation three years ago and forgot, but I'm looking forward to putting this on today and seeing how it looks all over. When people are commenting that my foundation does not match, are they literally expecting me to blend it like all the way down here? Are you literally kidding me? Every single article of clothing I own already has the color same with foundation, like if I was doing this, it would literally all be foundation. All right, you guys, this is a full face of the Makeup Forever Stick Foundation in the shade Y325. Next, we have the Dior Air Flash Foundation in the shade 200. Now, I was really not expecting to see this one in the finals, but at one point, I literally went to do a swatch on my forehead and realized that there was already foundation in that specific place, but it had basically disappeared in my skin. So I feel like this could literally be one of the best matches I've ever tried, but I wanna put it all over and see what it looks like. I really just don't get, like this application process is so strange. Like, are, <coughs> are you kidding me? It looks like Jack Frost. <laughs> this is not like, maybe if I just, I did not like the idea of a spray foundation one little bit. <coughs> that cannot be healthy. I feel like this color actually might be a little bit too pinky toned. It was blending really, really well into the center of my forehead and I was really excited, but I film in front of very, very bright studio lights and it gets pretty hot in here. So my face tends to get more red than my actual body is. And I feel like this might, 
Oh, this ain't it, sis. I will say though, this does look very pretty on the skin. All right, sisters, this is a full application of the Dior Air Flash Foundation in the shade 200. Next, we have the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid Foundation in the shade Ivory. Now, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, I really was not expecting to like this one, but I had this one in a really, really huge swatch right here on my neck, and as soon as me and my friends looked at the footage, all of our eyes instantly went to this one right here, and it turned out to be the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid, so I'm very, very excited to put this all over my face and see how it looks and I really really love milk the team there and everything that they stand for so I may have found a new favorite oh she's pale okay I'm a little bit concerned because it's going on very very pale and the last thing that I want is another flashback Mary scandal so I'm gonna wait patiently and see if it oxidizes Okay, I see very clearly now why I picked this one because it looks so good on both my body and my neck. Like the skin tone is like exactly the same, but on my face, the color looks completely different. It's like four shades lighter. Why does it do that? All right, you guys, this is a full application of the Milk Blur Liquid Foundation in the shade Ivory. I cannot believe that this next foundation actually made the final cut, but I cannot deny that it was a really great match all over the place, and that is the Fenty Beauty Foundation in the shade 170. You guys know I hated this foundation when I first tried it out a few months ago. I did not like the formula, but we're gonna try it again. And for this, I'm gonna use the Fenty Beauty Foundation brush because Alyssa Ashley uses this and she loves this, and I trust her a lot, so we're gonna put it on. I do remember from my first review that this foundation did oxidize on me a little bit, so I'm gonna keep that in mind while applying it. Wow, this brush is actually bomb. It's still looking a little bit light on my face, but it is matching my neck. That looks like a perfect match. Imagine the literal one foundation that I've said I've hated on my channel becomes a like perfect match. <sighs> Karma works in funny ways sometimes. <laughs> okay, wow, um, I have not even set down this foundation with powder and it's pretty much already dry. Little concerned, not gonna lie. You guys know in my routine, I use a whole lot of powder and I much prefer a more dewy foundation that lasts me throughout the day. But that being said, it does look really, really beautiful on the skin. So who knows? Maybe I'll have to give Miss Fenty Beauty another try it later on. But regardless, this is the full application of the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation in the shade 170. All right, you guys, and last but not least, I'm honestly not surprised that this foundation made it, but it is the brand new Morphe Liquid Foundation in the shade 2.20. This is the last color out of the four that I tried, and I think this one is a pretty good match. It looks like it'd be good on my skin, so I'm very excited to try this out on my actual face. Like I said, I just got the PR package, so I have not yet tried this one out yet. There's been a lot of drama and speculation online ever since influencers have started to get the PR box and have been posting it, because not even gonna lie, the 60 shade range did look a little bit unbalanced towards lighter skin tones, but even though I am Morphe affiliate, they do not pay me to talk about any of their products, and I'm never afraid to give my honest opinion, and my honest opinion about this foundation is that it is really, really bomb, but I hate this packaging. I'm not the biggest fan of squeeze tubes. I much prefer a glass foundation bottle. I think it looks a lot nicer, but using a packaging like a squeeze tube allows them to make the price point so low. It is only $14 and you're getting a really bomb foundation, which I think is super, super dope. But what I really, really don't like is at the top of this tube where you can see the foundation isn't actually a foundation. It's color treated from the inside. So this isn't actually a transparent window, which I think makes it really, really hard to shop for your right color because the color on the outside of the packaging doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna match color that's inside of the packaging, which one, I think is where the shade range speculation is coming from, but also two, makes it a lot more difficult for customers to shop both online and in store. So I've already told the Morphe team this, but hopefully they take the feedback from both me and all of you guys talking about it and put this into consideration for future launches, especially when it comes to fluidity, because I really do like how this foundation looks on the skin. And I think $14 for a full coverage matte foundation is a fantastic deal. Same thing with $9 for the concealer as well. So who knows, hopefully it'll get better in the future. But regardless, this is a full application of the Morphe brand new fluidity foundation in the shade F2.20. Oh, all right, you guys, oh my God, we are back. I just washed out my face for the final time. My skin is literally raw right now. Three hours later and 27 makeup wipes later, we are officially done with this foundation test. To be completely honest with you guys, I really debated as to whether or not I even wanted to film this video today, and before sitting down, I was a little bit nervous. I've been getting comments about my foundation not matching for a very, very long time now, some of which, of course, are constructive criticism, but most of which are very, very negative for literally no reason at all. I will say, though, taking on this challenge today was very, very fun, and I am low-key kind of proud of myself for putting my ego aside and really allowing myself to kind of learn and expand my knowledge. It was so cool to test out all these different foundations, you can see the different formulas and see all the shapes 
shade ranges and see what really goes into the different undertones. Clearly, I have a lot more to learn when it comes to that. But after testing out literally 30 plus foundations, we did find six that I think looked really, really bomb. And I'm very, very excited to see what you guys have to think about them as well. Our first finalist was my personal favorite, the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation in the shade Nude. Next, we had our Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick in the shade Y325. Next, we had our Dior Air Flash Foundation in the shade 200. Next, we tested out the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid Foundation in the shade Ivory. Surprisingly, the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation in the shade 170 was one of our finalists as well. And last but finally not least, we tested out and loved the brand new Morphe Foundation in the shade 2.20. Looking back at all six of these foundations, I do think that all the colors and the formulas had pros and cons for each different brand, but regardless, they all did look really, really beautiful on the skin. I have my personal favorite that I liked best, but clearly I don't know a whole lot about foundation. So I want all of you guys to leave me a comment down below and let me know which of the foundations that I tried today was my favorite, which of the six did you like, and hey, if it wasn't one of the final six, which one should I have tried out? I'm really excited to hear what you guys think, but please keep in mind, this is literally just foundation. It is seriously not that deep. There are more important things in the world to worry about. I've been doing this for three years now, and this is something that I've really, really struggled with, and I had a lot of fun with this challenge today, but I can guarantee over the course of the next three years, I'm gonna have a lot more foundation mishaps later on. So let's be positive, let's leave constructive criticism, and let's match our skin tones. <laughs> together. All that being said, you guys, that is all I have for today's brand new video. My face is literally raw. I need to go put on a face mask and moisturizer and head right to bed. But I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below and show your love and support. It really means so much. It helps me out a lot. And also as well, if you have not already, don't forget to click that big red subscribe button down below and come join this sisterhood. We are over 13 million sisters strong. Oh my God, you guys, we are literally growing so fast. I cannot believe this. And I am so incredibly grateful for our family every single day. You guys literally mean the entire world to me and I am so excited for what is to come as well. Don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you'd like to follow me on my makeup journey, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. They're both just James Charles. And my Snapchat for more behind the scenes stuff is James Charles with an extra S after Charles. This video's sister shout out goes to sister Caitlin. Thank you so much love for always following and supporting I love you literally so, so, so much. And if you at home would like to be the next video's sister shout out, don't forget to always retweet your video links and then go live on Twitter. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!